best introduction people can get is to find Steve McGreevy's website, and he will uh, custom build a electrostatic amplifier receiving system for you where you can start to gain access to these signals, but without a full-size Alex Anderson antenna and the proper grounding system, uh, the interference from power lines, all, all these things become magnified in these devices, so you have to get out into the wilderness in order to properly receive and you still ultimately can't reject all the interference, but it's a very cheap and easy way to start. So his name is Steve McGreevy. Um, I think one of his websites might be Auroral, Auroral Chorus, something yes, like that. that. Right. Yeah. And um, so he's known for um, using like these big loop type antennas or something, and he's picking up sounds from the Aurora Borealis. And yeah, trans well, and, and from the inside of the earth and okay. many other places, but but the devices cannot distinguish between the signals. It takes a more advanced antenna system. Okay. So you could, with a keen ear, with one of Steve McGreevy's devices in an interference-free location, as, soon, as long as there's no wind generating electrostatic or there's no coyotes running around with you know sparks on their hair, these things are very sensitive, but in, in the proper circumstance, you can hear the earthquake signals with your own ear before the earthquake happens. Mm -hmm. So this is probably what animals are sensitive to and picking up on when earthquake is about to happen and you know dogs and cats and all kinds of animals go crazy and they're running away and... Sound. Yeah, they're basically able to... So they hear they, they can hear those. Yeah, well for example, uh, you know, a situation I have when I first put this thing together at Landers is there's a, a very, very, very powerful Navy submarine transformer at Jim Creek, uh, Washington, I believe, uh, 2 million watts that uh, thunders out an electromagnetic wave in a vain attempt to get it to the submarines underwater. It kind of works, but, you know, it's pretty brute force. 2 million watts is the full output of one and a half to two railroad locomotives. So that's a lot of RF. So. This RF gets into all these devices that I'm talking about, uh, but you can't hear that high. Mm -hmm. But my pet coyote, okay, would be irritated by the speakers that were on all the time down at Landers with that background noise because it hears the mm -hmm. 25KC. And then on top of that, I found that in the years of, of living in my car out in the deep desert, uh, there's a geological formation which sometimes are called crystal hills which are little hills that are all like broken up pieces of quartz. And what I noticed one very, very quiet night with the car parked on top of one of these things is because of the electromechanical reality of quartz and being piezoelectric and converting from electrical, mechanical, and back again, is that the signals that were coming out of the loudspeakers at Landers, I could faintly hear coming out of the rocks because there was a big telluric event going on that night hmm. and the rocks were singing. Mm -hmm. Another thing I learned at Landers, because I also had a mechanical seismograph, which is probably the most sensitive in existence. It has a gain of one million over the standard USGS seismograph. Uh, so sensitive that, you know, you can see the impulses of uh, coyotes running around out in the desert. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the oscilloscope and you're watching the waveforms, you'll see on the oscilloscope all of a sudden a, a low frequency wave will come through. And because you're looking at it, that sound in the background that you normally ignore because it's a jet in the distance or it's a big rig out on the highway, well, this time it's not. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these background noises uh, that, you know, the technological society is generating uh, that basically numbs your system to regard it as noise is there's a fraction of those sounds that are actually coming out of mountains and, and rock formations very deep thundering sounds. So this is one thing I learned at Landers, and the next step was to couple that into the Bose 901 speakers so that you can actually hear in stereo the vibrations inside the earth and, and, and feel them through the speakers.